Afternoon, everyone. Um, I have one thing at the top, and then we'll get to your questions. Um, a scheduling note, the annual
expect all parties to comply with obligations under the law of armed conflict. So you're unaware that there has ever been a resolution to this specific I am not in a position to confirm that, no. uh, case. And then just the other thing, which I think you probably won't answer, but uh, are, is this group still being supported by, or was it ever supported by the United States? So for security reasons, we do not comment on which groups are funded by the United States. However, we don't support groups that commit this sort of barbarity, period. Yeah. So that would suggest, imply, without saying it directly, that if a group were to have done something like this and it had been getting U.S. support, it would no longer be eligible for U.S. support. I if, just repeat uh, my last point. We do not support groups. Are there – is it against the rules to complete a syllogism? It is, it is um, for security reasons. We don't indicate which groups we do support. It's policy. I'm asking you if you don't support them, not if you do. What I'm saying is that we don't support groups that would engage in this sort of barbarity. That would engage. In. That may have engaged. Okay, we're going to stay on Syria. So, Nick, you were going to go and then, but Nick is done. And then can I just throw your option? Okay. Are you guys on Syria? Okay, let's go. Sure. Um, so is there any update on the proposed um, arrangement with Russia regarding the targeting of al-Nusra and cooperation? I mean, in, in, back in Moscow, the Secretary, quite a while ago now, said they had made some progress on that. Is there any new information? Um, I have no update from the Secretary's comments on Moscow. And is there a concern <laughs> in this building that, that Aleppo, there may be some waiting on the side of the Russians? And with regards to the situation in Aleppo before any agreement is agreed to? Yeah, I'm not going to get ahead of, of those conversations. Barbara? Well, it's really kind of similar to what he was asking, which is you continually say there's no military solution and it has to be a political agreement, but isn't it quite obvious by now that the parties on the ground and the Russians think that whoever gets Aleppo will have leverage at the political negotiating table, so no matter what the U.S. might be saying, yeah. That that dynamic is going to take over. Has yeah, I, I over. wouldn't I wouldn't tie it to any particular military operation. Um, what I'd say is, we believe in speaking broadly about the talks, and, and the secretary said something very similar. Is if there is a chance to get to a genuine cessation of hostilities um, that provides the sort of full humanitarian access that we're talking about, that protects civilians, and provides the space, facilitates a framework for a political transition, we have to try. Uh, yeah. um, I know the Secretary's on vacation, but has he made any calls with regard to this um, through I to don't Syria? have any calls from today to read out. No? I don't. Yes, if, I have a, if I have any update, I'll have it for you tomorrow. So um, can I just ask in, in straight, what, what, I mean, do, does he still believe that a deal or um, is possible given what's happened? In Aleppo. So I would actually um, point you back to what President Obama said, you know, which Russians actu Russia's actions over the last several weeks do raise serious concerns about their commitments to pulling the situation back. Um, it is time that Russia proves it's serious about advancing its shared objectives in Syria. But again, we believe that this full cessation of hostilities, that humanitarian access, the space for a political transition, is really our only choice now. Nick, are we – and then we'll go back. Uh, a quick one on the Philippines. Oh, wait. Are we done on Syria? I'm sorry, we're not. We'll get to the Philippines. Go ahead, Abigail. Do you have any information <clears throat> on reports that two Americans were killed while uh, volunteer fighting for the YPG in Syria? Yeah, due to privacy considerations, I have no information for you. Yemen, I'm sorry. You know what? Hold on one second. Just yeah. The Privacy Act does not apply to deceased. That's true. But so does that mean that you do not believe that these people are dead, that they are still covered by the Privacy Act? What I would say is that I have no information on that that I can share at this point. Um, before we go there, are we good with uh, Syria? Okay, I'm going to go to the Philippines, and then I'll come back to you. Go ahead, now. Yes, thank you. Uh, on the Philippines, do you have a readout on the meeting uh, the Filipino Chargé d'Affaires uh, had uh, yesterday, I think, at the, at the Department of State? Or at least could you tell us if you were satisfied with the clarification 
he gave about uh, the very offensive comment uh, his president made against your, your ambassador in, in Manila. Um, yeah, I have no further details of that discussion to read out. Um, I'll leave our comments on, the, on what was said uh, yesterday. I'm not sure I understand why, why it is you were seeking clarification. I, I think what we were we were seeking is I think what we were seeking is perhaps um, a better understanding of of why that um, why that statement was made. So clarification of the, the, the circumstances you didn't I want think him clarification to clarify of, the, the content of what the person I said. I would agree with obvious. you. Yes. So you, you are not seeking. Apologies. I'm, yeah, I'm not going to detail any of the discussions that but, happened. But sorry there. to insist, but the, the U.S. Secretary of State was in Manila 10 days sure. ago. It's one of your closest ally in, in Asia. The President has clearly insulted your ambassador. Uh, the U.S. is not going to protest officially. I, we actually um, asked their charge to come into the department, uh, which happened yesterday. We had that conversation. I'm going to not read out any more details of that conversation. Is yes, sir. Oh, is this Philippines? Yes. I'm sorry. Is there any discussion to uh, withdraw or to suspend any financial aid to Philippines? Not to my awareness. No. There are reports out of Yemen that 14 civilians were killed due to Saudi-led airstrikes. Is the State Department concerned about the increase in civilian casualties in Yemen? Okay. So we do all up urge all sides to halt all offensive military actions, including in particular the area I believe you're speaking about on the Saudi-Yemeni border in Taiz and in the areas between Mareb and the capital. Of course, we're very concerned. And then a, a follow-up, is there any concern by the State Department that weapons that may have been part of a U.S.-Saudi deal in the past, maybe dating back to when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, is there any concern that those weapons are being used? Uh, when the civilian casualties are happening? You know, we've actually spoken about end use of weapons before from this podium. You know, speaking specifically on Yemen now, what we're talking about is, is we're all, urging all sides to uh, refrain from these offensive military actions. In terms of end use conversations, you know, they actually come when we do weapon transfers. Uh, so there's, there's no concern? Uh, particularly. I think our, our concerns are always on civilian casualties, and our concerns are especially on the situation in Yemen, which is at a very precarious place right now. There not be a halt in any of the tranches of uh, bombs uh, to Saudi Arabia? You know, this is, this is as you guys know, you know, we have, um, when we um, do arm shipments, we do announce those. Those are in, um, you know, as required. You know, I don't have anything to announce on that. Nick? Philippine, or I'm sorry, Yemen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have expressed, not you only, from this podium, the concerns. It's not the first time the civilians have been killed in Yemen. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you directly talked to Saudi Arabia? Have you reached out? Because from the Yemeni side, they are not kill going and killing uh, civilians in uh, Saudi Arabia. But it's the Saudi Arabians who are killing we're, this Yemeni We're seeing city. actually all sides perpetuating violence against but civilians in Yemen. have you talked to Saudi Arabia we, about it? We have had conversations with our partners on our concern. We've said this publicly. We've said this privately. No, not the partners. Uh, Saudi Arabia, I was specifically asked. We've had, we call on all sides. We've had conversations with our partners on that. Do we have any dates the last time you spoke? I have no conversations to read out to gender. Uh, uh, yeah. So a month ago, John Kirby said from the podium that uh, the U.S. had reached out to China to offer details about the system that it was going to install, and to his knowledge, the Chinese had not responded yet. Since then, has China responded, and have there been discussions with China about the FAD placement? Yeah, I have no conversations to read out on that, Nick. Let me check, and, and if we have something, I'll get back to you. Uh, Elizabeth? Uh, wait, are we staying on no, South Korea? Can you go back to Saudi Arabia and Yemen? Uh, of course. Uh, uh, the, the, there is a news saying that the State Department has approved a one billion sale of 153 General Dynamics M1A2S Abrams thanks to Saudi Arabia. Do you have anything on this? I do. As we are required to announce these, on August 8th, the Department approved notification to Congress of a proposed transfer of um, Saudi of 
up to 115 M1A27 um, Saudi Abram main battle tanks and related equipment valued at up to $1.15 billion under the Foreign Military Sales Program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Have there been any sort of conversations uh, between the U.S. State Department and the Saudis to avoid uh, civilian casualties as, you know, more weapons deals are in, in the talks? Um, is the State Department concerned that U.S. weapons um, that have been sent to Saudi Arabia um, will take part in the killing of civilians? So what I would say is we regularly talk to our partners and our allies around the world. You know, civilian casualties um, are obviously of grave concern to us. Are we going to stay on this? We, China? Yep. I'm going to go to China. Yep. Um, did you see the reports yesterday or um, overnight on the Center for Strategic International S Studies um, have provided the satellite photograph showing China had built um, reinforced aircraft hangars on one of the disputed islands? I did see those reports. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, does one believe this is, a, is you know, that China is continuing um, with reinforcing its uh, hold in these areas? Uh, is it a militarization? Have there been discussions? So I would say that this type of potentially dual-use construction activity has raised tensions in the region. It also calls into question China's willingness to abide by President Xi's statement last September that China does not intend to militarize its outposts in the Spratly. Such actions undermine regional confidence that China is willing to resolve contested matters in a non-coercive manner. We reiterate, as we have in the past, our call for all claimants to halt re land reclamation in disputed areas and further development of new facilities and new militarization of their outposts, and instead to utilize the opportunity presented by the July 12th Arbitral Tribunal's decision to reach an understanding on appropriate behavior and activ activities in disputed areas. So you do think that this is, is China continuing the same behavior? It certainly calls into question China's willingness to abide by President Xi's statement. Um, and can you independently, I mean, I, I'm not questioning that the yeah. CSI is, but have you, is, uh, uh, are these the same in images and are they true to what, what is happening? I mean, yeah, I, I would just I'm, let I'm our statement, yeah, I, I, I can't. You, um, you can't verify. Exactly. Are we staying on China? Yes. Yes, sir. So are you are you planning on um, taking any additional steps or changing uh, your strategy in terms of pressuring the Chinese? I mean, they've been continuing to build despite uh, your statements and calls for de-escalating tensions and taking this opportunity. What I would say is that we continue to raise our concerns um, about China's actions, both publicly and privately. You know, we continue to work on multiple fronts to convince all parties to refrain from provocations to work to peacefully resolve disputes. Do you think that continuing to raise these concerns have had a positive effect? I think continuing to raise these concerns um, is part of the process of diplomacy. I also have a sort of technical question. Beyond reclamations, it's been uh, reported that um, there's been an increasing number of Chinese Coast Guard ships that have been spotted near the Senkaku Islands. Would you extend the same um, sort of statement of concern? How do you assess um, these actions? So we're closely monitoring the situation. We're in close communication with the Japanese government regarding their concerns. The United States position on the Senkaku Islands, as stated previously by the President, is clear and longstanding. The Senkaku Islands have been under Japanese administration since the reversion of Okinawa in 1972. As such, they fall within the scope of Article 5 of the 1960 U.S.-Japan Treaty of Mutual Cooperation and Security. We do not take a position on the question of ultimate sovereignty on the islands. Anything more, Japan? Okay, we're going to go here and then I'll come back to you, Saeed. rejecting the Hague decision at all? Or? You know, as we said, we believe the arbitral tribunal presents a window of opportunity that claimants um, can take to explore diplomacy and to resolve these issues in accordance with international law. Go ahead. Uh, Ron, uh, does the department have anything on this letter that former Iranian President Ahmadinejad sent to President Barack Obama regarding uh, settlement claims? So we've seen the letter. Um, sent from the former president to President Obama. 
terms of the details on the court case, I'm going to refer you to the Department of Justice. Okay. Saeed. Can I ask about the Palestinian Very quickly. Uh, um, yesterday we talked about the world vision. We and then played today. The Israelis announced the arrest of a UNDP employee, engineer, you know, under really the most dubious of charges. They say that he, he worked on repairing homes that uh, maybe some Hamas officials lived there and so on. So uh, is this, are we seeing a trend that the Israelis are trying to really, you know, choke any kind of UN effort or humanitarian effort for the Palestinians, especially in Gaza? Are you concerned? So, there's two answers to that. One, um, I can speak from the U.S. view and what we think about on U.S. assistance to the West Bank and Gaza moving forward. You know, we believe U.S. assistance to the Palestinians serves our vital national security interests and is undertaken in close coordination with our local and international partners, which does include the government of Israel. These include efforts in the West Bank and Gaza to alleviate humanitarian suffering and work towards economic prosperity and security. The allegations against Palestinian humanitarian workers, if proven true, are a clear signal that both donors and nonprofits need to continue to be as vigilant as possible to help assure assistance reaches those it is intended to help. Um, we continue to work with our partners, including the Palestinian Authority as well as the Government of Israel, to strengthen safeguards to ensure vital assistance reaches the intended recipients. Um, on the UNDP charge, as well as on the World Vision charge, there are ongoing investigations on this, as you know, as you alluded to. You know, as the investigations move forward, we're working closely, we're monitoring closely. We understand that actually and particularly World Vision is doing its own independent investigation. The UNDP charges just came out. You know, they'll also continue to take a look at it as well. Because the track record is that Israel has never really been a fan of these UN programs, whether it's UNRWA or UNDP or others and so on. And certainly the Palestinian Authority does not have the authority to, to pursue such investigations or, in fact, the desire, especially where things uh, as far as Gaza uh, is concerned. I'm saying that would the U.S., you know, uh, suggest or in involve itself in some sort of a any kind of independent in investigatory body to look into these matters? Well, as I mentioned, World Vision is doing its own. I'd refer you to the UN Development Program. I'm not aware if they've announced their own independent investigation, but we will continue to monitor this closely. You know, as I said, aid to these areas is a U.S. national security priority. And one last question sure. on, the, on the power. Uh, Israel is cutting off power to many villages and towns in the West Bank because the Palestinians are unable to pay their bills, uh, apparently. They're, you know. So uh, it, the, 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 they appealed to the, to the High Court, and the High Court said that although they do have the authority to stop or to force the electric company, the Israeli electric company, from cutting off the electricity, they will not do so. My question to you, is the United States, can the United States uh, infuse the authority, the Palestinian authority, or uh, or those concerned with some sort of emergency fund to pay off for? You know, I have no I additional think. funding to announce. Actually, I wasn't tracking that. Let me take a look at it. We'll, we'll yeah. see. You know, on, on something like this, it sounds like it's in court right now. But let me see if I've got anything more on it. Said. Yesterday, yep. um, you were asked about uh, just demolitions of yep. homes and this Palestinian village. So I'm wondering, today there were some more demolitions in the South Hebron Hills that included the demolitions of some EU financed or donated buildings, and I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on that. We, we do, actually. Um, we're aware of reports that the government of Israel has demolished several EU-funded Palestinian homes in the West Bank. We remain concerned about the increased demolition of Palestinian structures in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, which reportedly have left dozens of Palestinians homeless, including children. More than 650 Palestinian structures have been demolished this year, with more Palestinian structures demolished in the West Bank and East Jerusalem thus far than in all of 2015. Have you spoken to them about this? You know, I, we remain in no, close I, I know. contact. I, yeah, yeah, but about this specific thing. Well, what I'd say is the recent quartet report itself actually highlighted. We believe that this is part 
of an ongoing process of land seizures, settlement expansions, legalization of outposts, denial of Palestinian development. Um, we remain troubled that Israel continues this pattern of provocative and counterproductive action, which raises serious uh, questions about Israel's ultimate commitment to a peaceful negotiated settlement with the Palestinians. Uh, okay, that's... Yeah, we do remain in close contact. <laughs> I'm not sure if this particular my, uh, one has Seriously, been my only question, yeah, okay, that's what I yeah. wanted. You don't know if there's been I any... don't know if we've raised this particular incident, but the question of demolitions has been in raised In general, routinely. yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. One last to gender. Uh, yeah, I had this one lined up. Um, that the have you received anything uh, officially from the from Brussels from the EU authorities about on this particular subject? Because there is a uh, feeling there that uh, the euro builds and Israel uh, is demolishing with a tacit support of the U.S. I I have no. Um, they have not reached I, out to you. I have no communication to read out particularly on this. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you.